cul-de-sac that's you know outside of the gated area. Um, if the, I you know I guess here's the thing. Uh, if the if the city doesn't want a gated community, now's the time to say so. Because I never dreamt that it would be an issue. I, I, there's gated communities all over the world. You know. Is the uh, the roads that are currently in place mm -hmm. are they considered a final road? No. What well, has to be done to those yet? Well, there's there still has to be. Uh, anywhere where it's, and as time goes on, anything that would have an issue, you gotta, you gotta put it, you know, cut it, put it in. We got tiles that we gotta cut and put in. You know, we were trying to make a roadway so the utility companies could get back in here, put the utilities in, and then we'll finish the road when it's all, when all the traffic, that type of traffic is over with, and we're done tearing it up. That's when we finish. So it's not even close to being finished at this point. And like I said, there's, uh, I don't know exactly, I can't tell you the footage, but I know it's less than half that is even done. There, there's a lot more to do than what we've got done. So. I mean, the one drainage pond that you, that's in place, why yes, are you taking over that land? Is yes, there any plans to put any additional drain ponds in to catch runoff water for the well, in the creek so quickly and raise the water level? They're done in the hydrology. That's what Ted Kelly has done. He's created berms on the lower side, on the east end, that would uh, hold the water from going into that unnamed creek. That little, that's basically a waterway for Leon Dobby's field. It's provided in the plains a berm that would retain that water, okay, and and hold it back. And then on, it's the northwest kind of corner. Uh, uh, just off of Sand Creek and right back onto where that little creek runs parallel to the railroad for a few hundred feet to berm that and hold it back there also. So essentially, yes, there's two more basically ponds, you know, but the idea is that they they won't hold water permanently. And uh, Gary actually made the mention this morning about if I put under drains in, it would, it would allow the uh, ponds to drain out so people could keep them moved which is how the existing pond is. It has an under drain and it's, uh, it, it, it never holds water, basically. I mean, it drains out. I've, I've had the property, I've been in possession of the property for uh, almost a little over three years now, I think. I've mowed the pond ever, ever since. When I went in and first took that property from the bank, weeds were growing out of foundations. Weeds were <coughs> 10 feet high. People were raising hell with the city about doing something about it. I went in, cut it all down, finished the projects that got abandoned, and uh, hopefully I'm doing the right thing with this piece of property, you know, with this development that we're doing. We're minimizing the impact. It, it, it's, it's such a, so much smaller impact than what the previous uh, design plans were. Uh, it's not it's not even comparable uh, part of that was to leave it in hills and valleys not take a dozer in and level everything so i could put carbon gutter in and get 150 homes instead of 23 homes yeah. I, I can definitely say that i'm not against your development the road is my main concern because driving on it every day and seeing how long it's going to last and what the durability of it's going to be and how it's going to hold up for people that do reside there. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. So what would you like me to do? Well, my suggestion would be that the city would require you to put in <coughs> like uh, curb, you know, uh, to help. I mean flat curb? You know, Some drain curbs, but flat curb. Something of that nature. That would help. I mean, Gary would know more about that than I would. An engineer or somebody, and holding the asphalt in place, you know, if that would make a difference. You might know the answer that I don't. Well, it definitely would. I can tell you. I mean, Gary knows as well. That and there are some. Uh, I will. I've told you everything else. I've looked up. There are other communities that do put flat curbs in. It's it's not a curb, but it's a border to the asphalt because of what you're talking about. It, it's a, uh, it, it allows the edges not to get raveled. You know, so. 
Would I be against it? I don't want to. But if that would be a concession to uh, to our situation at Buttermint, it would still allow the drain fields to be intact. It it wouldn't be. It's not roll curb. It's a, it's a flat border, you know, the, the concrete. And uh, there are some that re, that do put that in. I will tell you, I, I've looked up a lot of stuff and. Uh, that is a uh, that's another method, and that's why it's there. That's why they do it. So. If, if I may, I would also say uh, I was unaware of the, the idea of a flat curb, but that would actually alleviate some of the concerns I had with regard to liability for city vehicles traveling along people's you know where the road comes right up to the edge of the, of the lot. That would alleviate concerns that I had as well. Uh, and if I may, just for the record. Mr. Whitaker is 100% correct. Everything that he has asked for in his modification, you are permitted as a planning commission to approve if you find that he met the, stand, you know, the, the standard that he laid out, the, the multi-factor test. So that's my only other two cents. You know, um, my hat's off to you because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heck of a project. It's a tactic. I, I went out and I've driven the streets. You know, that's why I stayed there. It's going to be a beautiful, I think, subdivision. I think there'll be 23 people that, that uh, it's will a, enjoy it's that space in the community. That I believe to be a positive subdivision for the city. Um, I guess I'll interject some here. I, I, but everything we've talked about here, you're, you're asking for variance. We will come back to the street. That seems to be the one hanging up there for everybody's the street. Um, and then I can interject and we'll go back to the durability of the streets. Is, is, the, is the curb guttering the issue, or is the fact that we don't know if the streets would be properly put in, so 10 years from now, 15 years from now, they would, be, they would hold up to the traffic that would be on, which that can be proven with course animals. Well, you can't, the, the, the curb, the rollback curb or a chairback curb, you, can, you can't do that without building pipes and putting pipes and ponds in. So then that does, that does away with all your absorption field of what we're trying to accomplish with the natural drainage and, and the way. As far as durability, uh, I, I can't tell you that it's not because if you do a flat, you know, if you do a flat border, concrete border to at the border of the asphalt, at the edge of the asphalt, yes, it's going to be more durable because you're not right on the edge of the asphalt, bottom line. That's, I can't, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you any different because I know better and anybody that knows what the hell they're talking about knows better. So, uh, And I'm sure you know that addresses probably what Bruce's biggest concern was about it, I guess, right? I guess. So. The, the, the question is, we all know as a, as a board, if it seems that we come to the agreement, this is going to be a tremendous benefit to the community and this is going to take us further down the road. At the end of the day, I, I do food distribution, so I'm by no means an expert in roads, and I actually have no care to know about roads or, or drains. That's why Gary Murray and Chris is our inter attorney with the liability piece behind this. Are we, as a city, we're going to benefit, yes, with this, but are we going to be paying for it in the long run? That's the that's the question right now, right? Gary's saying that if these are done in this manner, there's a potential that we're going to have costs long term. With the border, with the sustainability of the roads, could that be something that alleviates problems for the city? In yes, that, 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 would, that would alleviate some of the problems. One of the things you don't know, the soils are not consistent. Um, the good thing is, he went out and he cut in the road, the natural compaction, some of the best you can get. Still doesn't mean there's not a soft spot under no, there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Wasn't cut out. We don't know that because sure. we weren't out there. Right. If we were out there, we'd make them take a loaded truck with stone and go over the road. And if the soil started moving and pumping, we'd make them cut it out because we know it won't hold up. Sure. But we weren't afforded that opportunity for what he's done so far. He's willing to afford us the opportunity to do that going forward. So you know, we we have a little bit of issue of what was down. I'm sure the thicknesses and everything that he says he put down, he put down. I just don't know what the condition 
of what he put it down on was. And you know, we can we can do that going forward. And if he did the flat curve, that you know, up against the edge of what he's got, you know, that's gonna hold that edge in place. You're not gonna have soft soils at the edge where it's gonna turn down. It's not gonna push out. alternative to a roll curve and keep the drainage the way it wants to do it. Now as far as the drainage goes, I've reviewed that pretty extensively. He's required from our ordinance to not run off any more once he develops than what it does in a five years from today. He is not required to detain any water that comes onto him from upstream. He's just allowed to pass that through. But they have done and submitted, they meet that requirement of the ordinance. So the one thing that the question is, is, or is a fear that this is not going to work or that we're going to be spending money down the road. And if we let fear determine every decision, we're probably always going to say no because it's, it is a bit scary, right? Um, at the same time, the improvement and what is going to happen with the community, does that outweigh what the fear is? And if we put the border in, hearing from Gary, that that would suffice and help with the road structure. To and, straighten. and what it's also a visual when you're plowing, right. you've got a place to stop. You're not going to go across that. You're not going to put a blade in somebody's yard like you would if you were just trying to plow the edge of the asphalt and all you saw was black. And next thing you know, you're peeling up somebody's yard. Yeah, you got because you've got that visual screen there. So. So hearing this, and he's already decided, he's already told us that he would be That's not right. against it, but he would be, he's not going to jump up and be happy that he has to do it, but this is something that he would be willing to do. Yeah. I see no problem with approving this plat with those modifications and the modifications that Mr. Whitaker has provided, and I'm excited for what the future holds with that development. That's my opinion. Can I, can I ask one of your opposing question to Gary? Yes, sir. Is there a way to, if you did core sampling, or is there a way to find out if the road that's currently in place it would have met the standard? I mean, that you guys would have approved it if it had, if you had been offered that chance. I mean, can we go back and look at it now and say, yeah, that would have been well, an okay road? The core sample will say whether you've got the thickness of stone, you've got the thickness of asphalt, it's compacted correctly. Yeah. That certainly can be done. Okay. But again, any geotechnical engineer will tell you that's good for that four-inch spot that you want to hit. The road. So again, soils are not consistent, and you have soft soils and, and other things. Where we're doing uh, Veterans Way at the roundabout, they had to undercut that about five feet because there was a, a pocket of soft soils before they were able to get compaction on what your road actually sits on. So it wasn't. Squishy. Isn't also, Gary, the intent of the fact that you, you don't accept the road until a year after the dedication uh, or from, from completion before the deed of dedication, isn't that though? exactly the reason why they do that so that if there are any soft spots that develop it's it's on the developer to repair that instead of the city because you can't test every inch even when you're out there looking at it you're not nobody i've put in a lot of subdivisions and not one time has there been a city engineer or a city plan director on site the whole time never they come out and they've checked uh, the uh, with a loaded triaxle and see what it looks like and that was that's what was done and then we went from there and if there was any uh, thing that had to be fixed we fixed it before the deed of dedication uh, milestone paved this milestone graded milestone or part of the grading uh, milestone uh, uh, did the uh, compaction on the stone you know they put roads in every day it's not like I don't have a paper myself. 
if I did, I'd probably done it, but I don't. So, you know, I think that it's, uh, uh, it would be foolish to think that I'm not going to have a spot that I got to fix. So, you know, and I, and I know that already. I've, I've done it before. No matter how hard you try to get everything right, sometimes it's just what he said. There's soils are different in different areas. One thing that could be done, uh, I have not talked to Jeff about it, but I've seen it done in other, on other projects that I've been involved with. Um, he may be willing to hold his, his performance bond for two years instead of a year. Yeah, so if, if he's giving you two years of a warranty, maybe, and you can ask him if he wants to do it, but two years of a warranty, <coughs> that would give you more comfort of saying, okay, there's definitely going to be more concrete trucks. There's going to be more low boys going in there for people digging basements and everything else. If, if something's going to happen before he puts the surface down, this will probably want to wait until you've got I'm gonna get 20, a lot of 15 to 20 done before you put the surface down. Okay. And that's going to be the time that you've got the dentist payment section down. That's when you're going to see any kind of bid. If he's willing to maybe hold a bond, performance bond for two years, and then turn it over, it gives you that extra comfort and not that fear that you might think about. Jeff, yeah, is that something you would entertain? I wouldn't have any issue with that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's whether it was one year. 24 months up. So I think problem with that. Board members, any other comments, questions to Jeff? I'm still chomping at the bit here. You know, uh, Jeff has said, you know, what has happened in the past, and, and he's right. Several years ago, we were probably lacking in some areas. But once we got a city engineer hired, you know, we improved our situation here in Greensburg on development. So we have made improvements. That's why a lot of the reason we're standing here tonight hashing everything out. Maybe a few years ago we wouldn't have been standing here hashing things out. It had been said and done and gone with. But my concern is, uh, Counselor, if Mr. Whitaker still wants this to be a gated community and not open to the public, even though the people out there will be paying plenty of tax, there is tax revenue that maintains the road. Um, we, <coughs> the city doesn't get for MBH to maintain the roads, no removal and everything. We don't get all that money. We get a very small portion of it to maintain the roads. So we have to include everybody's tax money in Greensburg. So when we include everybody's tax money for the, the maintenance and snow removal and everything else, the, the streets and roads in the city of Greensburg, can we deny any citizen, any taxpayer, of the use of those streets? You know, that's a question. And the next thing is, without, without it being private, a gated community, are we held in liability for the such things as the 300 degree radiuses at 30 mile an hour for a right or left hand turn? You know, what? liability do we have? We want to make this work. Uh, like you said, uh, Commission President Kevin, we'd like to have this in our community. It would be quite an asset to our community. We want to work with the developer, but what can we do without putting ourselves liable for different things, not following our own ordinances? And uh, like the counselor said, we can, you can you can waive those requirements. How much liability do you want to put on the backs of the city? And like I said before, let's try to make this work, but not put the residents of Greensburg in any kind of jeopardy. If it's going to be a, a private gated community, so be it. You know, if you want to get those waivers, it's the housing association's liability then. But. Uh, just something to think about, but that is a concern of mine. If we're going to spend tax dollars, can we limit, restrict public use of those streets to just
just drive out around there just to gaze and see what's being built. They're going to be nice homes. It's going to be something to see. Nice topography, country setting. You know, I'd love to have a home out there. But do what you can, guys. <laughs> I'm, I, I will admit I, I do not know the answer to that question as to whether or not you can. I don't believe there's anything in our local ordinance that says that I think you're right. I don't think there is a local ordinance that addresses a gaming community. Uh, so that means you would be referring to state statutory schemes and, and generally speaking state statutory schemes in this area are going to say refer to your local ordinance. So I, I, I don't, so I, can, I cannot answer that question there. As I sit here now, I cannot tell you for sure if you will be permitted to deny access to a citizen or a taxpayer um, to a gated community on, if it's on a public road. I, my gut tells me that the answer is probably yes. If you, if you approve of the plat and it's a gated community and you know that that's what the subdivision is, my guess is you can't. But I don't want to give you that opinion without, I wouldn't want to give you that opinion without answering, without actually doing research. And I will say I have not answer that question or uh, not look that question uh, as to whether or not we are increasing our exposure to liability um, certainly I, I mean they, yes you are anytime anytime the city does anything that has that involves design or you know implementation of a design you're exposing yourself to liability anytime you deviate from what was your normal standard design function you know, standards, you're, you are increasing your exposure to liability. Um, does that mean you shouldn't do it? That, that's entirely up to you guys. I mean, I've, I've said it before to this commission, I'll say it again. I mean, I can sue a ham sandwich if you want me to. Um, so can I tell you that there's a way to create a subdivision that can't possibly be sued? No. And, and frankly, if you were to have a, an auto accident in there, um, you know, within the subdivision, even if it was gated, I mean, you're still probably still going to get sued. Even if it was a private road, you're still probably going to get sued because you didn't put up the right signage or you didn't have the right type of gate or whatever. And the homeowners association is going to get sued. Everybody's going to get sued because that's what my profession does. We sue people. Um, but, uh, so to answer to the mayor's question, yes, you will increase your liability, uh, your liability exposure. How much? I don't know. Uh, whether or not you can create a way around it, I don't know. I will say that the, the things that I have, that we've been addressing with Mr. Whitaker tonight, the things he has agreed to do, the increase, uh, you know, of his, of his performance bond, the, the of the flat curb, you know, those types of things I think are going to help. Um, but certainly, if you deviate from your design standards, you are increasing your liability exposure. Well, it's getting late and everybody wants to go. I'm certain of that. So, the only thing I'm going to say to that comment or comments by the mayor is. Uh, you changed your liability when you allowed 300 foot radiuses and 30 mile an hour curves. You brought traffic up to a higher speed than what was ever allowed in residential subdivisions prior to that. It was 20 mile an hour. My suggestion is a 20 mile an hour speed limit on this road, this entire subdivision. I would rather see people slow down, not speed up with highway performance curve, curves, radiuses. I think they should go slower. Um, procedurally, you you have what is in front of you your normal option. You can you can approve the plat as requested. You are the yeah the primary plat. You can approve the primary plat as as requested. Um, you can require changes, so you can ask that the, that the developer implement the changes that you want to see 
made, and then you know, then you're approving the plat subject to those additional agreements from the developer, um, or you can deny the plat and uh, say, you know, go, essentially you're saying go back to the drawing board, or you can take them. So those are the options that are available to you for a parliamentary procedure. I'm going to make a motion that we approve this based on we do core samples to the road that has already been constructed, that Jeff put a flat curb on that area, that the city then takes over and inspects the roadway that is constructed from here on, and that he increases his two year, his performance bond from one year to two years then my motion would be to approve it with his modifications as requested. Yes, sir. And that the two foot flat curve? Yes. Uh, we've got the width agreed to now. We're not going to talk about that. And the core sampling is at the developer's expense? Yes, the core sampling would be at their expense. Yes, sir. I do have one other thing, Roger. I'm not sure you guys know this as far as on the plan. There are two cul de sacs that are curved together that are tied to what is existing on Jack's way. So that won't be flat. That is just like the rest of it. I just want to make sure you guys right. know that. And that those, those with two. the exception of the two cul de sacs. Right. With the, this would be with the exception of the two cul de sacs. A second. I have a motion. I have a second. Blake? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Bruce? Yes. John? Yes. Roy? Yes. Five zero. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'm confused. This one to be private. Or the city's going to maintain the streets and roads in the future. This one be a gated community. Heck, I don't know who's responsible for maintenance on the gates. The gates, the fencing that we were putting in around the roadways and any landscaping was that is all to be maintained and done by the homeowners association. That was never intended to be part of what the city's responsibility would be. So that's that wasn't part of it. And my motion was made on the assumption that the city would be responsible for the streets if those things that I brought up in the motion were met. The core samples were okay, that he put the two foot flat curve in, the two year performance bond was, was done. And we would maintain the streets. I have no objection, if it's legal, if you could research that for us, to it being a gated community. Now, if we have to allow, because city money is being used to maintain the streets, if we have to allow access, we have to allow it. There's nothing we can do about it. My idea would be to go ahead and let it be gated for right now, unless you tell me otherwise. Okay, that's fine. I can certainly come with that answer. But that was my understanding of what you had motion. Was that your that understanding? What your statement was? And if I could, just for as a point of information for the record to reflect, all of the I votes was that your understanding of the motion as well? Yes. Then I'll get you an answer on that gated community thing. That's an interesting one. So we're all in agreement. Now we had one Yeah. It's too late. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, my this guy here. Oh, my God. Yeah. Gary and Mr. Holman, do you I don't believe so. I think he was trying to call him, but I don't believe they are. Okay, so that was the uh, item three's report status of that same building. He was, he, was, he, was, he was notified with a certified letter that he was requested <laughs> to come here and give you guys a timetable. Neither did he. I haven't seen the green card come back, which means he's either refused it, uh, or 
ignored your request. Gary, on the on the minutes you've got here that he requested to appear for an accessory building location, is that is he going to want the new? No, building? he's got an unsafe building garage. He's yeah. at uh, first northeast corner, first right. east. But I thought I thought maybe he wanted to apply for a, an accessory building. No, he's got okay. an accessory building with a roof that's falling in. I know yeah. it's too old. And it was on the unsafe building list, and again, here we go. What do we do? Do we want? Do we want to start finding? Do we want? Do we end up decided last meeting to give him another chance and notify him again to come up here before the board. And he's he's chose to ignore that. He's chosen to ignore again. So I I guess do I understand? Uh, Gary, when you went out, or did you go out and check out the building itself? Yeah. Uh, is the building worth saving, or is it salvageable, or is it just? It's damaged? salvageable. It's it's just the decking for the roof. The, the rafters and trusses look fine, so it, it could be repaired. It could be repaired. But it's but only going to continue to deteriorate in the spring with the hole in it and the rain running into it. Then the decking is the rafters and joists are not going to be. So anybody's had a water leak, you understand? Um, my idea is we pursue notifying him that he's being fined. Uh, I can send him a notification. And that's my idea. I don't know what the rest of you think. But. Yeah, I can certainly send him a notification that indicates that we're you know, implementing the fine, that it can be reported against his property, and the other things that we can do with unsafe building, including entering onto his property and have it removed at his cost. See if that lights a fire under him. Okay. That so bad too. That all might have to be served because the mail's not working. Right. Well, we have we have had to do that in the past with other residents, and what I the way I did that is had someone from my office actually physically go serve serve the papers, uh, or we can ask one of the, the police officers to physically serve that letter. I drove past the building and he's right on the street mm -hmm. that the building is. So if he tears it down, there's no way he can build anything back there, right? Not going to meet the setback. So if you'd like me to do that, I'm happy to do that. That'd be my suggestion, but is that the consensus of the board? I agree. Yes. 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 Can I ask? You want for a motion? motion? I'll make a I'll make a motion that we allow Chris to do that. So I'll second. Call for a roll call. John, for a roll call, please. Not a roll call, but a voice vote. Voice vote. Blake. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Bruce. Yes. John. Yes. Roy. Yes. Happy to do it. All right. Item four: Other items of interest for planning commission members. No. I have something of interest for the Planning Commission. Yes, sir. Sometimes I bring good, bring good news. I'd like to introduce our new city engineer, Mr. Lon May of Acon Engineering. We're putting him out of business and putting him to work. Lon, would you like to tell how about if you are, please? Well, as, as the mayor said, my name's Ron May. I've um, been in the engineering business now for 44 years, I think, something like that, too long. Um, done uh, some amount of this kind of work, spent a lot of time working in transportation design work, worked for a lot of counties, including Decatur County, done some work for the city in the past, and I've always greatly enjoyed the time I spent in Greensburg and Decatur County, and I'm happy to have this opportunity. Um, looking forward to having a chance to work with all of you as time goes forward and uh, see if I can help and maybe agitate every once in a while as much. John, source of his position, welcome to the city. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now you can ask for a motion. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved.